One of the most organic subjects found in the Bible is the fact that God is going to establish his kingdom on the earth. The entire story of the Bible revolves and pivots around this idea, this promise that God is going to establish his kingdom on the earth. So when you talk about that, it seems kind of simple, but immediately it gets real big. Stay with us. This is the place you can learn about this. We want to talk to you today and for a number of days about the kingdom of God on the earth. When we talk about the Bible, you can find no subject that is more central to Scripture, whether it's Old Testament beginning in the book of Genesis, or whether you go right through all of the uh, New Testament, all the way to the book of Revelation. One of the facts is, is that God is going to set up a kingdom on the earth, and he is going to be king but there's also going to be humans in the kingdom. It's not going to be everybody turned into angels. And that there will be a human king who will be the son of David. So how can you have two kings? Well, the answer to that is Jesus Christ, who is God manifested in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16, and also is the word incarnated, John 1.14. Then on top of that, he is also the son of David, Romans 1 and 4. And he is that by the seed of the flesh, and he's also that by declaration of earning the title victoriously through his death, burial, and resurrection. All of those things are major subjects that revolve around the fact that God is going to have a kingdom on the earth. Now, Many people are talking about the kingdom of God, and oftentimes they talk of it using one word, which is the millennium. Millennium is not really a Bible word. It comes from John chapter 20, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 20, where John describes the kingdom that is to come after the second advent of Jesus and he describes it there as being a thousand years. He uses the, the, the word thousand there at least a half a dozen times in the first uh, six or seven verses. So <clears throat> that's where the idea of the millennium comes. Meal is a thousand and annum is years. Millennium, thousand years. This is where it comes from. However, before we get hung up in talking about those things, we need to establish this one simple but very profound and deep <laughs> and complex subject. That is that God is going to establish a kingdom on the earth and that this has been his purposes even before the foundation of the world, that God is going to do this. And we are going to be part of that. When I say we, we who are following Jesus Christ and are believers and have obeyed the gospel. And so this is a major thing. So when, we, when people talk about the millennium, it is better identified as the kingdom of God or the, or the coming kingdom of God or the kingdom of God on earth. So let me just lay a little uh, simple foundation here. Before we talk about the kingdom of God on earth, we need to establish that the kingdom of God is already in heaven and God is the king. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to go through a whole lot of scriptures to prove that because uh, there's a multiplicity of places you could address the subject that God is the king and there is a kingdom in heaven and it has a hierarchical order. Uh, now somebody could say, well, a, a king, a monarchy is not the best form of government. Well, that's because you're looking at monarchies from human perspective of human history. If the king is perfect, then it's the best government possible because everything that he does is perfect and it transfers perfection to the entire kingdom. So when we talk of this 
and we describe this kingdom idea, there's few, if any, subjects that's more prominent than this one, the coming of a future kingdom in which the rule of God is on earth, and it will be realized as the rule of God is in heaven brought to earth. So, in some ways, it's unfortunate that the discussion of the coming of the kingdom of God has been reduced to, in many cases, to a, a quite narrow, limited discussion of something um, identified as a millennium only, instead of talking about the word that actually is a broader, and I think much more appropriate phrase, the kingdom of God. Uh, but prior to engagement in such a conversation, uh, we need to talk about the deeply ingrained truth about there really is a coming of the kingdom of God to earth. God will be king, and he will rule over this kingdom. So <clears throat> when we look at this, this will be a fulfillment of the prayer of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, where he prayed, and this is what he said, after the manner, therefore, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So Jesus is telling us when you open a prayer, this is just your daily prayers. When you open a prayer, the first thing you do is you glorify God and you acknowledge him as Father and you hallow him, which is, which is to worship him. That's the first thing you do. There's not one single request, not about heal my headache, not about bring revival to my church, not about give me a car, not about help us to have a baby. No request takes precedence or precedence over this prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, the fact that that prayer is, it is a teaching prayer that Jesus is telling us when we pray, this is, we pray thusly, okay? That makes this really important. It's a prayer lesson from the one that we pray to, that actually uh, models the whole concept of prayer to us in John 17 and other places. And so the very first thing he says is, thy kingdom come. Then he also says, thy will be done in earth. When the kingdom of God comes to earth, then God's will will be done in earth. Well, how is it going to be? As it is in heaven. So this kingdom we're talking about, the more we learn about the kingdom of heaven, the more we will know about the kingdom on earth because the kingdom on earth is the kingdom as it is in heaven. So this is an interesting thing that we learn immediately, that the, the, the kingdom of God on the earth is not something that is a novel creation, that God came up with some, somehow relatively later in the flow of history um, or in the flow of creation, but that the idea of God's kingdom coming to the earth, number one, is extremely prominent. Number two, it's acknowledged as such by Jesus himself in teaching us how to pray, which would be number three, and, and uh, that it's going to be as God's kingdom is in heaven. So this is a pivotal aspect. This is a pivotal aspect of the whole idea um, of God's kingdom. And the whole schema of scripture. And this has been an ultimate purpose of God from before the foundation of the world. Think about that. The kingdom of God on the earth has been an ultimate purpose of God since before the foundation of the world. How do we know that? We know that because of Matthew 25, 34, for one place, where Jesus is talking and he says, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
So when you talk about from the foundation of the world, this specifically connects the kingdom to, to the very purpose of earth even existing. When it was founded, this was part of the purpose, is that God's kingdom would be established in the earth. And when you talk about Christ, he is identified as foreordained. I'm actually quoting, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last days for you. So he is the king and he is foreordained as such uh, before the foundation of the world. So when we're talking about this kingdom, um, uh, it's going to come. Now, there's a lot for us to talk about how it's going to come, what the Bible tells us about all of that, many eschatological facts about it. But, but let's establish first very clearly, there's a kingdom of God coming to this world. It is a kingdom of God on a level that the world has not yet seen. So that means it's a kingdom that's still in the future. It's not here now, but it's coming in the future. And, uh, and Scripture makes this clear. The very fact that we, people that are in the church, that the Bible says we have an earnest of our inheritance when we receive the Holy Ghost. That's an earnest of our inheritance. Earnest means you've, you've got the down payment. You've got the, the, the portion that guarantees that it is yours. You've got that down payment in you. But it's not the whole thing yet. The whole kingdom is not only the kingdom of God in you. The, the whole kingdom is the kingdom of God everywhere. And so that is what is coming. <clears throat> so it's evident that uh, like the intent of the Garden of Eden was to spread and to be to envelop the earth with this incredible uh, transfer of the Garden Eden governmental model, which was from heaven with all of its wonders and benefits, all of that would be transferred to the earth. This is the beginning of understanding that God is establishing a kingdom upon the earth. And uh, just skipping through here to get the groundwork laid, again, with the giving of the law, God commands Moses in uh, numerous places. He said, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So, even when Moses was building the tabernacle, he was building it after a model that the book of Hebrews tells us is what is in heaven. And so on earth, there is a model of the tabernacle, which would be in the center of the kingdom of God that he is building in Israel, which is the first attempts to create uh, on, a, on a global scale since the fall, the kingdom of God in the earth. So when you, when you look at this, you begin to realize that these purposes of God are pretty evident in these scriptures. So, so this was a central part of the instructions uh, and of the infrastructure that is imported to earth from heaven as a foundational piece, which will be found at the center of God's kingdom, that is the tabernacle coming to the earth. And this idea is advanced uh, as we just kind of look through the Bible. It's advanced with the incarnation in which Christ is the temple of God, as well as being the king of the kingdom to be established. And so thus, when the people heard Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, the people took palm branches and went forth to meet him and cried, and this is a quote, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. So all of these scriptures are indicating to us that God has a kingdom that he is bringing, that he's going to establish in the earth. It is not here yet. It is in the future. And we would say that it's here in part because we have the earnest of our inheritance within us. So it is here in part. It is here in you. And in our day right now, Jesus tells us the kingdom of God cometh not by observation. You can't see the, the physical elements of the kingdom, a throne, a, 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 a capital, a, all of these things. Uh, those things are talked about in the Bible as coming. But right now, the kingdom is not meat and drink 
and it cometh not by observation, these are scriptural statements, um, but it is within us. And so we have that at this point. But the kingdom of God will be that plus much, much more.